Hello, YouTube friend, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today I want to speak with you about um, one of my favorite fish, the Hapochromus, and in particular what is often referred to as the ambush predator uh, of that species. And, uh, and I want to speak with you a little bit about the ones I have in the tank behind me in the 135, and also some that are growing out in the 100. So thank you so much for tuning in, and let's take a look at this, uh, at this fascinating fish. In this tank here, we'll start off with the polystigma, which as he's become older, has lost some of the patterns that he had originally. You can see here in a photo that I'll insert here. And he's becoming more and more blue and green in the body, especially around the head. And I'm finding that um, Contrary to some of the comments and tips that were given to me originally, this is not being accompanied by any increase in antagonism or aggression. He is undisputedly the tank boss, but as, his, uh, as he's taken on more of his adult coloration, I haven't noticed any increase in his uh, pursuing other fish. He more or less kind of cohabitates with them without much of a problem. Another fish in here is the uh, living stone eye. And this is a male, but he is uh, growing a bit slower, certainly slower than the polystigma. Beautiful markings. These fish, these fish can get up to over a foot. And the theory behind these markings is that it helps them to camouflage, but also to look dead when they lay on their sides and act like they're a, a dead fish. They can look like, a, like rotting flesh. And then what happens is an unsuspecting baby baboona comes by or a fry or any fish that'll fit in the mouth and they will go from being a dead fish or a rock to a very, very efficient ambush predator. This fish can also get up to about a foot. And at one time was, um, was dominant over the uh, polystigma, but that uh, changed several months ago. And I am looking forward to him getting some blue in his face and some additional coloration. Also, we have one of my favorite Nimbochromus is the poly, is the, I'm sorry, is the Fusco. This Fusco right here. Beautiful coloration in the face, in the gills, in the lips. Beautiful anal fin and tail markings. One of my favorite uh, Nimbochromus they color up relatively young compared to the other ones. Just a beautiful fish that can reach a foot in length. And again, if uh, once he gets size, like size he has now, anything that'll fit in his mouth, he'll eat it. So this is not a fish that you want to keep smaller fish with. And really, he needs to be in a tank of at least 125 or, or larger. Certainly one of the favorites in the hobby is the Venusus. I picked this fellow up when he was about a half inch at a local fish store where they were selling him for three for $10. The two less spectacular ones were um, sold to a local fish keeper. And I kept this fellow here. I love his markings. I love the blaze on his forehead. And he's starting to get some blue around the face. And some very nice markings in the tail. And the dorsal. I 
I also have a um, sand diver in here. And he is, um, he survived about with uh, Colomaris and uh, was in quarantine for quite a while. Finally came back. And I'm looking forward to seeing him color up at some point. He's a very peaceful uh, hap. Doesn't really mess with anybody. Tends to stick to his own. And we'll get uh, certainly over 10 inches. And he's already pushing, I'd say, maybe six inches now. And uh, probably in another inch or two, he'll start coloring up nicely. I'm hoping it's a male, but I'm not entirely convinced. He's got some flashes of color, but this could be a female. There's also a hawk in here. Lowy hawk, very pretty fish. This one certainly shows flashes of uh, iridescent type colors. So maybe the promise of being a male, though I'm not entirely convinced yet. Fingers crossed, you can see some nice colors there in the gills. I also have a very large Taiwan reef in here. This Taiwan reef is pushing about seven inches. Very maxed out. But not what you'd call a predator or ambush predator, but really too big to keep in the other tanks. Let me show you a couple other haps that are going to eventually end up in this tank. There are several haps in this tank that are going to definitely end up in the 135 eventually. One of them is this eye biter right here that can get well over 10 inches. I'm hoping he's a male. Can't tell for sure at this point. But he does have some very nice markings, very nice, uh, very nice shape to the fins, growing nicely. And uh, probably around four to five inches right now. And he will double that, uh, double that size. I also have some uh, Buchochromis notatanias, three of them in here. Here's one of them. This one I believe is a male. Nice egg spots in the anal fin. There are two others running around. Here's one. I also have a Malawi gar, very shy. You can see him poking his head out in the very back of the tank, but he's primarily black, so you can't even see him. At any rate, he, uh, he is a one-eyed, one-eyed Malawi gar named Jack Sparrow, and you can barely make him out back there. And he will end up in the 135 because he will get uh, he'll get over 10 inches as well. So there are three haps in this tank that will end up moving to the 135, and the rest of the fish that I have in here will remain, except possibly the. Uh, Maduka white lips, the Tanzania, because these fish of course get very big, they can get up to over 10 inches. This Tanzania is beautiful. As is the uh, Maduka white lips that I picked up from Paul, the inventory king. For those of you who follow my channel, you know that this polystigmus suffered some uh, severe damage to his tail with some Colomaris bacteria, and it has filled in very, very nicely. But his nickname is still Polly Halftail. That is his, uh, his mafia name, Polly Halftail. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, the uh, Venusus lost a lot of his cheek to bacterial damage, and that has also filled in 100%. Also, if you notice the background, the background of the tank is recovering its original color. That's from the work of the, um, the work of the plecos. The plecos have worked on it considerably, and it went from being almost totally black now being more of the original color and they've cleaned up the rocks almost entirely 
as well as the heater, the heater shields in the back there. So the plecos are doing a wonderful job in naturally getting rid of the algae bloom that occurred after I removed the algae scrubber. So there you have it. What are your thoughts about the, uh, the haplochromis and the ambush predators that are often, often called uh, predator haps? What are your thoughts about those fish? Uh, share them below. I'd, I'd certainly like to hear them. And uh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite ambush predator? Do you keep them? And if so, what's been your experience with them? Uh, share your thoughts uh, with me and certainly with the community. We have a lot of folks that I think read the comments besides myself. We all learn from, uh, we all learn from them. Thank you so much for tuning in, my friend. Bye-bye.